Hey, everyone. Sorry, I was away last week. So um, I'm back sharing day seven of the Brad Triggers 30X Wealth Program, which is badass. I mean, it, it, it's it's awesome. So I'm just um, sharing my notes. This isn't a deep training or anything like that. If you guys want to watch, I'm just going to share some ideas and some notes that I've gotten just from going through today's, well, today's training, day seven training. I'm catching up because I, I took a week off. So let me just share my notes and go through those with everybody. Thanks for watching. Again, this is um, a 30-day course I'm going through with uh, Brad Triggers. If you don't know who he is, he owns companies like uh, Action Coach and things like that. Um, very wealthy man, does very well um, going through his wealth course. I'll be doing his business course. Um, I might do his life course. You know, I've, I've done a lot of training on that stuff, but um, really focused on long-term wealth and things like that right now. So let me uh, share my screen. Do, do, do. And there we go. All right. So day seven was about more about cash flow and capital. Okay. Um, so if you recall day six, I don't know what day I shared that. Um, that was on uh, passive income streams. Now, let's see if I can move this little thingy, my Bobby here. Now we go down to day seven. Okay. If you want to see those other videos, just scroll. If you're on Facebook, scroll, YouTube, scroll. They're all one after the other. But today's day seven, cash flow and capital. So there's two ladders um, when it comes to cash flow and capital and creating wealth, long-term wealth. So let's start with the cap. We always we sorry, we always start with the cash flow ladder. You know, when you're starting to create your wealth, you want to start with cash flow first and then capital gains. Okay. Why? We'll get into that. Now, at the bottom of the ladder, okay, in your cash flow ladder, you, you're a student, right? You're learning. You're learning to get a job, things like that. You're in school, what what have you, right? Um, you're you're learning the family business, whatever, before they hire you, what have you. The second step up the rung up the ladder is you're an apprentice. Now you're learning how to be an eff effective at the job. Maybe you're going to a trade school. Maybe you're you're in college, you know, things like that. Uh, or you're an apprentice, right? The apprentices don't really exist anymore, kind of. You know, there are, I, I don't know about now, but I know like, for example, when I got into coaching, I was basically an apprentice uh, under Tony Robbins. You know, I did a lot of things for free or paid my own way just to learn uh, from Tony directly. So um, th those opportunities might be out there. I I'm not sure. I haven't looked for anything like that in many, many years. Uh, then the next rung up the ladder is you're a well-paid employee. Okay. So now you're an employee uh, or, or, you know, for example, with apprentice, it could be, um, I've had jobs like sales jobs and things where you were, you were, um, what's the term I'm looking for? You were, you were, um, gosh, what's the word? My memory as you get older, right? Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, you're um, you're on kind of like a, a pending basis where you have to prove yourself, right? You're, you're on a probation, probation. That's the word, probationary period, right? You're learning to see if you're going to be good at the job, right? So anyways, uh, then you get into being a well-paid employee. You, you know how to do your job. You're doing well at it. You're getting better and better at it. From there, uh, right? So basically they're paying you and training you. Hopefully, if they're not training you, they're paying you. They're not training you to advance and get better and better at your job. You might need to consider a different job, right? Uh, but then you get into management roles or leadership roles, hopefully, right? If you're learning and growing, um, you know, one of our human needs, right, is uh, to grow. Um, so you're learning to lead people and run a company in that in that management position. Then you become a self-employed person, hopefully, if you grow and expand, you know. Um, per perfect example, like I just mentioned, when I worked for Tony Robbins, it was, it was going from being a leader, a trainer, a manager, to saying, hey, do I want to take the leap and go out and be self-employed, be a coach on my own? Yes, I took the leap, right? Most didn't. But, you know, now you're self-employed. Hopefully, you've learned how to sell, how to market, how to build teams and all of that while you were in your other roles as manager and things like that. Uh, then you get into, you know, your manager, your manager or leader of your own business. So now you go from just being a self-employed person where you're doing all the work, you're doing everything. Right to now, where you're bringing on people, you're you know you're hiring managers. You're, you're you got salespeople doing your sales. You got managers managing your salespeople. You have, you know, you're you're building a team of people to run your company for you, and then that's where you can step into being an actual business owner. So <clears throat> it, it's a little tricky, you know. People think, you know, they're a business owner if they have a you know if they just have a business, but if you're if you're doing the work, you're not necessarily a business owner. So a business owner, you really don't have to show up to work if you don't want to. Um, 
actually I have a friend I don't know if he's watching it here and, and I ran into him about a week or two ago and I used to work for him and he owns a, a used car dealership here his name's Tony and and um Tony was telling me because I, I don't even go into you know I was asking about the office and all that stuff and you know some of our friends to work there and stuff and he's like I, I don't know I don't even go in the office anymore so you know that's a business owner Right. He he doesn't know the company runs itself. He's got managers running this running the, the, the thing for him and he just collects the money, right? And and reaps the rewards. So that's a business owner. Okay. Um, and that's the highest performing asset class for cash flow is owning your own business. So we're, the first thing in generating wealth is focusing on cash flow. All right. Now, um, cash flow. Let me see where we're at here. So there's three asset classes. There's business, real estate, and then the share market. Okay. When it comes to um, you know the asset classes, now um, building wealth goes through three levels. Okay, well I'm sorry. The, so that's the cash flow. You want to throw you, you want to focus on cash flow. You know, in rough times, <clears throat> you really want to have that cash flow coming in. Um, it's more important than your capital gains. Okay, in building capital assets. So, in the capital ladder, okay, we have retail investing. Well, let let me do this the other way. We have the seller level or entrepreneurial level where you don't buy investments. You actually create them and you sell them. That's an entrepreneur. That's the seller level. Okay. Where you're creating a, a product or a service or, or, or something like that, where you are, um, you're the seller. Okay. Um, so that can be businesses, franchises, real estate, um, you know, the share market. If you provide, you know, if you build a business where you are providing shares, right, you're selling shares of your company. Um, you have uh, being a, a, well, you first off start off, obviously, in the capital ladder, uh, you start off as a retail investor, right? You're, you're, you're buying stocks, things like that. You're paying retail for these things, uh, businesses, franchises, um, maybe you're buying an existing business, but you're not good at negotiating, things like that. Um, you don't know how to negotiate. Like I said, you're just buying stocks or it could be even funds. Right. You're, you're, you're investing in a fund, right, with a fund manager or what have you. Granted, everything that I share on here, you got to ask an expert. Don't you know, don't listen to me and just do something I say. Right. Ask an expert. I'm just kind of sharing information. <clears throat> this is knowledge that I never knew. <clears throat> and I just want to share what I'm learning. OK, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm literally just learning this stuff. So I'm just sharing my notes and I'll get better and better as I go through the years. And I'll share as I become, you know, I learn these things and master them. I'm just sharing my notes. I'm just learning this stuff myself. So um, you had, you're, you're a retail investor at first, right? So you're paying retail for all these things, right? Um, and then so you're paying higher fees and, and, and taxes and things like that on this stuff. Then you become a wholesale buyer, okay? And that's where you've learned how to negotiate. Um, that's where you make a profit on day one. As a wholesale buyer, whatever you're buying, whether it's shares or real estate or anything like that, you're making a profit on day one. Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah. So the, the thing here with wholesale buying, it's like, well, how do you, how do you buy wholesale? How do you go from retail to wholesale? Well, you really typically, like if you're talking about shares and things like that, or investments, you have to become an accredited investor. Okay. And that that's based on your income and your net worth. And if you say, you know, that that's not fair, you know, I, you know, I got to pay retail unless I'm a wealthy person already. Well, it's because there are laws and rules put into place. Okay. To protect you. And and that's very, very important. Um, if you just kind of jump into the wholesale arena, if, if there were no rules, no regulations, you, you'd lose your ass. You'd lose your butt, right? You, they, they would just take you to take you to the bank. So you got to start off as a retail investor so you can make mistakes. Um, one of the examples that that Brad was sharing is a game, you know, you can do with your kids is where you take a hundred or a thousand dollars, whatever, give it to them, tell them to invest that for a year. And that's their learning experience, right? It'll, you know, they may, they may or may not lose that, all that money, but they will learn a lot. So it's about what, what do they learn? So that's a perfect way to, you know, to, to, to um, picture it, you know, it's a learning experience. And then wholesaling is where you've, you've now learned. So you get better deals. Um, they trust you more, you know, things like that. Now I can tell you, I've, I've done a lot of like Forex trading and things like that. And there's a, there's a, there's a way for you, if you get really good at it, that, companies and people will let you trade their money when you get really, really good. Now, when you're first starting off, they're not going to do that. But as you prove yourself, there's tests they have you do, you know, they monitor you for, you know, a month or so. 
And if you do, you know, you follow their rules, certain rules, and you 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 generate a certain um, return, they'll let you trade their money, and you keep a majority of that that um, you know increase that you help when you're trading their money. Anyways, so the next step on the ladder, okay, is is the seller level, and that's what I talked about at first. So I did that backwards. That's where you become an entrepreneur or a business owner, where you you create something that's global and, and you take it public, you know, create an IPO, things like that. Now you're you're a seller, okay? You're not a you're not a retail or a wholesale buyer or investor, okay? Um, today I'm going through this quick. Actually, it, it took me a while to learn this stuff today, but um, it, I actually broke it down pretty pretty simply. <laughs> I think <laughs> I hope um, I hope I'm making sense here. <clears throat> so here are some of my notes. So why we use the cash flow ladder first? This is what I was trying to remember before uh, when when I got on the video here. So let's imagine the economy goes negative. Do you want to have a lot of assets and a little cash flow, or do you want to have a lot of, um, or do you want to have a lot of cash flow to balance out your assets? Obviously, you want to have cash flow first. When 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 the economy goes negative, right? When we're in recession, things like that, you want to focus on cash flow. You want to have cash flow. You want to be cash rich, asset poor initially. You want to have that cash flow and focus on businesses and investments and, and and things that will generate cash flow for you. Then once you have a nice solid cash flow, you can start, you know, shift that and start focusing more on on, you know, assets that create capital gain. Okay. Um let me see. Yeah. If you get caught asset rich and cash poor and the economy turns negative, that usually is a very bad situation. Uh because you have to sell the assets. Yeah, that's a good important. You have to sell the assets for below market value to be able to get yourself into a position where you've got cash to survive. So I don't know if I can, I can't highlight that. Let me see. Highlight, there we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So this right here, I'm highlighting this. You can see that, right? This is the reason why you want to focus on cash flow first, okay? So if you get if you get caught in a down market, like we're having right now, and, and um, you know, you have to, you, you need to generate cash and you have a bunch of assets, you're probably going to have to cut, you know, you're, you're going to have to cut your costs. You're going to have to sell them below market value. I, I, I can, I'll give you a perfect example. I don't remember exactly when this was, but I had a bunch of uh, silver coins. Okay. Um, at the time, the economy was going good when I got them. Okay. So they were valued very, very high. And I had certified silver coins. I had hundreds of them. And, and then uh, the economy was going bad and I needed some assets real quick or it needed some cash, sorry, real quick. So I wanted to sell the coins, but I would only get spot silver price on those coins, even though they were worth like four times what I was getting for them. So perfect example, when when times are tough, okay, the economy's tough, things like that, and you need cash, you're gonna take a hit, you're gonna take a discount, okay? So you wanna make sure you have cash flow first. I didn't at the time. Now, uh, the other thing is you, oh yeah, and so you've bought these assets after tax money. so. Perfect example, all those silver coins I bought when I had a job, right? I had a J-O-B. So at least 30, well, it was more than that because <clears throat> I was in a higher income tax bracket, right? So I think it was 35 to 40 something percent was taken out of taxes, <laughs> okay? And then I was buying after that, I was using the after tax money to buy those assets. So that they were actually even worth less because if I make $100, I'd only have like, you know, $70 that I'm using to invest in these coins. And then when I had to take another hit, right? Then I'm selling them below what I bought them for. So you know you're taking like a double whammy, a double hit, if that makes sense. Now, if you have really strong cash flow, right? You're cash rich, assets assets strong, and then the economy goes negative, you're in a really good position, right? So in a negative economy, you want to be cash flow rich. All right. Uh, so cash flow is number one. I already went over that. I know some of this is redundant, but I just want to make sure I cover everything and I don't forget anything. Um, yeah, obviously the best the best deals have both cash flow and capital gains, but you really first want to focus on the cash flow. Um, now, here we get into all right. So, business strategy to build wealth. So you have um, you know you have business, you have real estate, really, and and uh, shares to build wealth, right? Stocks, things like that, investments like that. Um, so the business strategy to build wealth is mainly for cash flow. You're building a business mainly for cash flow. Um, so how do you replace, so basically you're, you're generating a business, right. To replace your active income. Now, the great thing about 
a business is the cash flow determines the value of the asset. Okay. So when you're building a business, the cash flow that that business generates typically determines the value of, of the business of the asset. Okay. Like for example, if you wanted to sell it, sell the business, excuse me. Now, let's say you take it from a mil take that business from a million, excuse me, to 2 billion. I'm sorry, 2 million. You've now doubled the value of your business, obviously. Right. So that's why we love using businesses first. Now, if you can build a good business, you can build a good asset. Okay. Now think about this. What do most wealthy people invest in? Like Warren Buffett. Now, Warren Buffett, he invests in businesses, right? And he fixes them up and he keeps them. Most wealthy people, they invest in businesses. That's typically what they're investing in. Um, now, business is going to take you multiple businesses to get good at. It, okay. So it's a lot of learning. There's a learning curve. Sometimes you need to go through, you know, two to three side gigs or businesses before you get really good at building business. Now, a lot of people put down, you know, things like network marketing, MLM, right? Well, it's a great learning place where you don't get hurt as bad. You learn sales, you learn marketing, you learn team building, you know, things like that. So it's a great place to learn with very, very low risk, meaning learn how to build businesses, learn how to build teams, learn how to sell, influence, um, market, <laughs> excuse me, all that, as well as generate cash flow. Right. So regardless of what you think about it, it's a great avenue for, for that. OK. Um, now, granted, that's all determined on your efforts, like anything. Right. If you're going to start your own business, you want to be wealthy. OK. It's going to require a lot of effort, a lot of learning. It might take you several years to get it right. Some people, they, they get in, they do real well, real quick. Some people take some 10 years. OK. Now, typically, it's going to take three to seven years. Okay, for most people to learn business and get really, really good at. Okay. Um, so I can skip through some of this because I think I kind of I kind of kind of narrowed that down just now. Um yeah, to get really good at business, uh, it's gonna take you three to seven years, learning, understanding, applying. Um the, you know, the whole goal here, yeah, in business is really to to build something that you can either take national or global or sell it. Okay, that's that's the whole idea with business. Um, I think there was a Ray Kroc example I put in here. Yeah, because he he at first had a local business, right? It was a local business selling uh, milkshake machines, right? Then he, you know, he met the uh, McDonald brothers, whatever whatever it was. I forget the details. If you, if, if you haven't seen the, the movie, The Founder, it's been years since I watched it, but I highly recommend The Founder if you want to learn about, you know, business and growing and building business. Great story. Um but he went from that's a local business selling milkshakes, right, to a national business, you know, building McDonald's stands around the uh, around the nation, then taking it to being a global brand. <laughs> Excuse me. OK. Now, the other investment type that you that, that you know, um, that that he recommends is real estate. OK, so the real estate strategy to creating wealth is first starting with singles or residential. Again, this is all. Because of the learning, you don't want to jump into commercial and you don't really know anything about real estate. You're going to probably lose your butt, right? So you want to start off your first step in your strategy. Now, remember, earlier we talked about creating your plan. Your plan might be different. You might have different avenues you want to use. I'm just going on, you know, based on what Brad is sharing, what he recommends and, and what I, you know, I believe in as well, listening and watching this based on what the explanation. If you want more details into this, Get, get his course and go through it in detail. Um, but with real estate, the strategy is investing in singles, single family homes. Now he suggests you look for, you know, normal neighborhoods, norm, normal homes, right? Um, single family, you know, husband, wife, two, three kids in a nice neighborhood that you don't mind going and collecting the rent in. Okay. <laughs> you know, you don't want to, you know, look for neighborhoods where you might be scared going and collecting the rent. I have a friend, Chris, and uh, he, he might watch this, but, um, Chris was telling me a story. I think it was, uh, yeah, Maryland, where <laughs> where he was investing. Uh, you know, eventually he was investing in apartment buildings, and and uh, it was a scary, scary situation for him to go collect rent. I think one time they got blocked in on the street. 
Um, I don't know if it was drug lords or whatever, but it was very dangerous for him to to go and try to collect the rent. They had blocked off the street and it was, it, you know, he had to get out of there. But, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to find, you know, normal single family properties in a nice normal neighborhood, maybe fix them up, keep them, rent them out. OK, that kind of thing. Then you can start once you get really good at that. Right. Then you can start getting into the others you know, that are mentioned here. Um, like. Um, yeah, anyways, like apartment complex, and you start multifamilies, then apartment complexes, and then commercial. So it's all a learning and it's all a process, okay? You don't just jump in and make a bunch of money, right? This is a long-term wealth building strategies, okay? This is what the wealthy do. You have a basic strategy, and then you might have your more aggressive or risky strategies. Um, okay, what else do we have in here? Okay, now we talk about shares. So, you know, you have your buy and hold strategies. Um, you have options. You can trade. Like I said, um, I, I really like... Um, a forex trading um but you know with that you know that is active you know that's still active income it's not you don't you don't just invest it in returns cash flow so something i'm learning you know that's um that's active cash flow right but it's not passive cash flow so i'm looking at you know what are some other strategies to invest where you get not only you know capital gains but you get cash flow okay so anyways um I hope you guys got something from this. I'm, I mean, I, I'm skipping around and I'm, I'm just going through it real quick. I just want to, you know, share some thoughts, some ideas. Maybe it'll trigger something that you already know. Uh, maybe something you know you're not supposed to, you know, know that you should be doing that you're not doing. You know, like a lot of this stuff that I learned a lot of this a long, long time ago and I never did it. I just knew it, but you don't understand it till you're living it, right? Um, till you're actually doing it. You might know things, but if you're not doing it, you know, it's like you might know how to work out, but if you're not doing it, you're not going to get in shape, right? So anyways, hopefully this triggered some ideas or, 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 you know, some of you are, this is totally new to you. Maybe, maybe that's good. Maybe I turned you on to Brad and his program, you know, um, you can go start learning about wealth. Um, I think the younger, I wish I, I wish I learned and applied most of this um, you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> so, you know, if you're young, even better, you know, you maybe this will, will, will open your eyes and say, Hey, you know what? I really need to learn. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know that I need to go learn. So, um, you know, your strategy, I wrote down here. Um, oh, taxation also needs to be part of your plan. You need to look at all of your strategies, whether it's for cash flow or capital gains, you need to make sure that in your plan, your one year, three year, five year, 10 year, 20 year plans, you know, where are you going to be? What are you going to invest in? That all needs to be laid out just just like a just like a business. Okay. It is a business plan for your life, for your fortune. And um, you know, taxation needs to be part of that. Um, and now your strategy will change. Like I said, initially it'll be focused mainly on cash flow, right? We need cash, we need money to live, right? In the civilized world, right? <laughs> um, so it's gonna be mainly on cash flow at first. But after cash flow, right, then you can start switching more to, to capital gains, right? Where your money's making money for itself and you're collecting assets and things like that anyways i hope you guys like this i'm going to end this right now and i appreciate you watching and you have a blessed day bye-bye